All right, welcome back. So we did a really detailed coverage of the home unit because that's the beginning of the year unit you're going to be using with your kids if you're using the older active physics text, which a lot of schools are still using. So we went through that um, lesson by lesson in, in, in much detail. We're going to go through the rest of the curriculum in a little bit less detail, but we're going to cover a little bit more in each video trying to uh, get you through most of the curriculum. All right, so hopefully you get a feel of how to teach a complete unit from the previous set of videos on the home chapter. And now we're just gonna hit upon some key details and uh, some of the upcoming lessons you're gonna be doing with your students. So we're gonna talk about active physics 2.1 through 2.3 in this video. This is what comes next in the pacing guide. So you actually skip sports chapter one and go back to it later for some crazy reason you start with sports chapter two i don't know but that's how it's set up in the pacing guide again this is the old pacing guide that you get from the science department on the weebly it has a new pacing guide with the new book so if you're using the older version you want to contact the science department to get this pacing guide and taking a look at this we have right here one class set aside to introduce the activity and set up a rubric i feel that's a bit of a waste here what i like to do with my students is just read over the challenge with them and show them the rubric or give them the rubric that's available in the teacher text. And uh, there you go. Take 10 minutes at the beginning of class, explain the sports caster challenge that they're going to have to use physics to relate to a sport and explain what's happening in that sport. Again, we're focusing on standards 1.4. Um, really in the beginning of this, these chapters and interpret and apply Newton's three laws of motion. So they're going to talk about forces and Newton's laws of motion to explain the physics behind the sport. So looking at, so again, just take a few minutes at the beginning of class. You don't need a full class to introduce the challenge, just a few minutes. And then you're going to get right into 2.1, a run and start. All right, and basically what this is all about is students are going to have a, a, a salad bowl or any bowl and a little marble or ball, and then some ramps, like two ramps in the ball. And they're just going to see that whatever height they drop it at, it returns to basically the same height, not quite the same due to, you know, some friction and it slowing it down. But they should qualitatively notice this. And I actually just focus qualitatively really quickly on this activity, not taking time for them to actually compute the ratio that the textbook has you try want them to compute the start in and end in height. They should be able to see that it's just about the same height. Um, and what would happen if the ramp was a little bit lower. And this is actually something that you know you could go over very quickly with them and then do some supplementing about Newton's first law and the law of inertia. Uh, what they saw, how it's related. So as they read in the in the chapter, there's a little reading on the law of inertia, Newton's first law. You can now supplement this information and what they did in the activity with some of these resources here. So Eureka Science video has a really nice video on Newton's law, puts it in very easy to understand terms for students. So check that out. And then, um, one of the things students love is the tablecloth trick, and that's related to the law of inertia. Objects at rest want to stay at rest. So you could show them it online. If you're daring, you could bring in the materials and try it yourself in front of the class, or actually do a mini activity with students where they have a cup and a coin and an index card, and they, they, they move it, and the inertia of the coin allows it to drop right into the cup and you could play around with the mass of the coin different masses or different amounts of coins and talk about the relationship between mass and inertia which is detailed in this video as well the physics classroom has some good reading on the uh law of inertia if i show you here um so this is a good thing to check out there's a lot of supplementary reading here and there is a nice little animation that shows you know what happens if you don't wear your seatbelt and you're in a car crash and convertible objects in motion will continue with this the same motion a good illustration there and i like to also uh show that to students with some crash test dummy videos they like to watch that and we like to talk and relate that to newton's first law and if you 
how if you want to and if you have the time you could make little cd hovercrafts there's a lot of instructions on how to do this pretty easy come by these resources and a good illustration since the layer of air reduces friction it it shows the object in motion will continue with the same motion so another idea to supplement before you move on to the second law uh, 2.2 push or pull um one thing to talk about if we look at the pacing guide there's a couple weird kind of typos i think so this says to relate to momentum and practice momentum problems there's nothing really about momentum yet so i don't know what that's all about um and then this has them to do the activity and then direct instruction on Newton's first law in 2.2. Actually, 2.2 is about the second law, as you're going to see. So again, uh, just be aware the pacing guide's a little weird here. Um, so this one, you're going to be talking about the second law, F equals MA. For every force, there's going to be an acceleration. So what we want you to, to, to look at here is there's a few things to watch out for. First, it has the term acceleration, which hasn't been introduced yet because it's actually introduced in chapter one of sports. So you're going to have to actually define this for students um, before they begin the activity. And then notice when students do the activity, they're not going to push the ball with a consistent force um, because they're going to have to keep running faster and faster. That force will produce acceleration. So you're going to have to model this. You want them to see actually that acceleration there. So just watch out for that. And um, you may want to play around with balls of different masses because part of what they need to know here is the relationship this formula tells them that for a force, it's going to produce an unbalanced force. Technically, it's going to produce an acceleration. Uh, the larger the mass, the larger the force you'll need to produce acceleration. So they could see that relationship if you have, you know, a tennis ball versus a bocce ball or some balls of different masses. You, they could see the difference in the force and how that ruler flexes. Again, you have to use a flexible ruler for that activity. But again, this is all about these formulas right here. These are introduced in the reading, and students are going to need a ton of practice using these formulas. So I actually recommend that you skip activity 2.3, center mass. Don't do it. They're not going to be tested on it. Instead, spend that extra time giving them lots of problems and lots of practice solving that formula. and for weight, it's basically the same formula. It's introduced in the reading. It's a force. Weight is a force. Helps students understand weight is a force. And instead of acceleration, we're just going to use G, acceleration, and gravity. But there's they're going to need a lot of practice using these formulas, uh, particularly if you're doing this in ninth grade, with which most of us are. The algebra is not quite there, so you may need to introduce the formula triangle, teach them how to use that. Um, and uh, do a lot of practice with that in those 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 problems before you move on. So skip this 2.3 and do extra practice and extra practice problems using the formula. And the next video we'll talk about 2.4 and on.